This video will discuss how to set up and solve a quantity discount model problem using Excel and Solve. In this problem, we have a vendor for which we have a fixed ordering cost of $10 per order, an annual holding cost percentage of 40% 40, 40 based on the unit purchase cost, there's no storage cost per unit for this product, although we'll build a model where we have the flexibility to include this. We have annual demand of 2,400, working days during the year of 240, and a lead time of five days. We have a quantity discount schedule with six price levels. For example, the unit purchase cost is $35 if we order between 1 and 49 units of the product. If we, if we pay a lower price, we must order more units of the product. For example, to, to purchase for $32.35, we would have to order a minimum of 150 or as many as 299. The unit holding cost is based on the purchase cost. So the unit holding cost will be the purchase cost times the holding cost percentage. And I'll put the dollar signs as absolute references on the holding cost percentage plus the storage cost per unit. The storage cost per unit would be a component of the holding cost that does not change with the purchase price. In this particular problem, we don't have that type of cost, but the way we're setting up this model gives us the flexibility to incorporate this. Copy that formula all the way across, and you can see that the holding cost decreases as the purchase cost decreases. The last maximum quantity is just an arbitrarily large number. In reality, if we buy any number of units 500 or over, the cost will be $30.75. We just put an arbitrarily large number here because this will make the references within Solver consistent. We need to solve this problem for each price level separately. To do so, one way we can bring in the correct values that are associated with the right price level is the HLOOKUP formula. In the HLOOKUP, we'll first reference the lookup value. That will be the price level analyzed. Right now we have 1, but we'll change this to any, any number between 1 and 6. I'll hit F4, the function key, to put the dollar signs in. The table array is going to be all of the purchase cost, quantity, and holding cost information for each price level. I'll hit the F4 function key to put in the dollar signs. The row index number tells us the row in this table we want to look up and place on this line. The unit purchase cost is on row 2 of the horizontal table, so we'll put 2. The last element in the HLOOKUP formula is a cell that tells us whether we want an approximate match or an exact match. And we'd like to have an exact match. So we double click on false, type the close parentheses, and hit enter. To test this formula, we want to enter the other price levels and make sure that the unit purchase cost changes. For instance, right now I have price level 6, and we can see that the unit purchase cost is $30.75. If we enter a number like 7, we get an error because we don't have seven price levels, and it can't find seven in the top row of the table. 
we want to copy this formula down. Right now we just see that 35 repeated, but that's because we need to correct the row index number in the formula. Instead of looking up the minimum quantity on row 2, we want to look it up on row 3. We want to look up the max quantity on row 4. And the unit holding cost on row 5. We can expand this to two decimals for some of these values. Now that we've set up a system of references that can pull in the correct price level information, we need to build the cost model and the ordering model. The order quantity is a decision variant. We'll just enter a starting value, like 100 here. The orders per year is the annual demand divided by the order quantity. The daily demand is the annual demand divided by the number of working days in a year. The cycle time is the order quantity divided by the daily demand. Now we're ready to enter the cost model. The annual fixed ordering cost is the orders per year times the fixed ordering cost of $10. The annual holding cost is the average inventory, which is Q divided by 2, times the unit holding cost. And it's important that we reference the unit holding cost from the, the section of the model where we're looking up the information. This way, if we decide to solve with a different price level, it will adjust the unit holding cost that's factored into this annual cost. The same goes for the purchasing cost. The purchasing cost is the annual demand times the unit purchase cost. We want to reference that down here in this section, which will adjust based on the price level. The total cost is the sum of these three costs. The demand during lead time is the lead time in days times the daily demand of 50. As long as this is less than the order quantity, then the demand during lead time is the reorder point. So, for instance, with an order quantity of 100, 50 is the correct reorder point because 50 is less than 100. We'll check this when we implement our final solution for the best order. We're now ready to use Solver to come up with a solution. We're going to solve this for each price level. So the objective, though, for in each case is going to be the total annual cost. We want to minimize this value. And we're going to have one changing cell. That's the order quantity. The constraints are going to be based on the minimum and maximum order quantities for that price level. Our order quantity needs to be greater than or equal to the minimum, and I want to be sure to reference it from this section of the model where we're looking up information for the correct price level. The order quantity also has to be less than or equal the maximum order quantity. We do want to leave this box checked so that we don't get negative order quantities, and we do need to use the GRG nonlinear solving method. Now we can go ahead and solve.
The best order quantity within this price level is 49, which happens to be the maximum. What we need to do is save off the ordering model and monetary values for this price level. I'm just going to copy this portion of the model and create a table down below. Now some of this information isn't correct because we need to copy the values, not the formulas. So let me recopy the numbers and then down here paste the values, which is the clipboard with the one, two, three. We've saved off the results of solving the model at the first price level, and now we'll examine the other price levels. To examine another price level, we change the price level analyzed, in this case to two. We simply open Solver and just resolve the model. And now we get the best solution within price level two. One thing you'll notice in price level two is we're not bumping up against the minimum or maximum. The order quantity is in between the two. And when that happens, the fixed ordering cost and holding cost are equal at 408. That means this is the economic order quantity. We'll copy these values and paste the values. So we've got results from two price levels. Clearly the second price level is better than the first because total costs over the entire year are lower. We still have four price levels to consider. We're going to resolve at the third price level. In the third price level, the optimal order quantity happens to be the minimum value for that price level. So we'll just solve for the remainder of the price levels and copy off the values, and this will be the information we'll need to make a comparison and make the best order quantity decision overall. Lastly, price level six. What we need to compare to make the best decision is the bottom line. We want to have the lowest total annual cost. The lowest total annual cost occurs at price level 5, 76,709. This means we want to purchase 300 units at a time. So overall, when we consider all of the price levels, our best order quantity is 300. And overall, when we consider all of the price levels, the price we want to purchase inventory at is $31.15. This means we'll have a total annual cost of 76700